right, so here we are with the rear wheel rim. Another genuine Yamaha part, which is the little rim plug. Uh, which I'm going to put in to that hole right there, which is adjacent to the, uh, to the valve one down there. So on second thoughts I turned it round so that the big side is on the inside and uh, it's just showing a little bit on this side which is probably what they intended just fitted the uh, rim rim ribbon with the uh, pen there to keep it in the pen there to keep it in the valve in the position and that goes all the way around nicely now I want to uh, crack on and put the first bead of this with the valve mark adjacent so it will just mean uh, putting some soap around the edge there and putting the first bead on so now I've got the first rim the first bead is on the rim and I uh, can put some soap around the edge of the tire uh, put the inner tube in and uh, match up all the marks Brake disc bolts on with several of these, which we got. Um, so we torqued up the rear sprocket, we fixed on the, uh, the rear disc, and this is ready to be fitted to the bike now. Right, I've been disconnected the rear brake uh, caliper we can this effectively is the spacer required to keep the back wheel straight so when we get the new spindle we'll be able to use that as the spacer which will looking at the actual caliper at some point in its life I think the uh, bleed valve broke and so they put it put a bleed valve here at the banjo bolt And this, oh my god, I think, you know, I don't know what this is, but it's bad. Which is a shame, really. So getting the rear wheel on with the brake caliper in place, it's a bit, it's not the caliper, but the caliper bracket. It's a bit tricky, I'm hoping this cable tie will do it, although the disc has got to come up here. And, um... It might just be fouling it. We'll see how it goes. So tucking the spindle in, I just kind of put this at a sort of guesstimate place, rather than over the end there. I just put it in the middle. The middle number might be easier to do. It's evident that the front brake's on wrong because it's grinding. The suspension works. I just got to get rid of the uh, cable tie. So I'm just removing the uh, union bolt here, and the uh, caliper hopefully will split in two. And I can have a look at how the uh, these clips react with the brake pads. So having uh, removed the uh, caliper bolt and pulled out the plunger. Uh, right there is the back of the, uh, the rubber inspection bung that you can remove, apparently. You remove this bung here and you can have a look at the state of the uh, pads. So uh, perhaps I'll pull that out, give it a little lubrication with my uh, silicone grease and uh, move on. But I think it seems to be... Uh, whoops! That seems to be quite a bit of damage there. I don't know whether it is leaking, but I should think it is. Which will mean it will it will need to be completely rebuilt. Or at least that bit will. So giving the uh, part of the caliper a clean, if I hold it at this angle, it becomes obvious where the brake pads go. they get held in uh, here and here 
and so I'm just removing uh, this metal clip and uh, see it's got a sort of arrow and the arrow points uh, away from the uh, screw holes so if I just uh, push that out I can get that clean and the arrow points outwards and it points So I've, I have decided that this is going to have to be replaced, and the piston as well, or the pot, whatever. So I'm going to remove this banjo bowl, which probably needs another washer anyway, and I may as well get a bleed, a bleed nipple while I'm at it. Now, I don't know, I don't know, maybe I should I'll just carry on inspecting it, but I've got to make a little shopping list for this. And it's going to be about 40 quid, I reckon. I think one of the reasons I'm looking at this with such fear is because I know I've got to undo this banjo bowl and I know it's going to be as hard as hell so I'm already thinking you know heat you know I've got to watch it there's a lot of rubber around so I just got the uh, brake bleed nipple out and uh, it was airtight it sort of hissed as I opened it and uh, Actually, you can see there's a little bubble of uh, brake fluid in there, so it was actually uh, liquid tight, uh, but it still looked a bit rough, which is a bit sad, you know. But there we are. So I just pushed the uh, piston uh, back home in there. Oops, bugger. And I managed to catch all the uh, brake fluid that come flying out. So you know that was uh, actually better than the Suzuki. Okay, investigating a little further. Nice bleed nipple, although it's a bit rusty now. But it's all dry at the end. Uh, so looking in, oh, there is some brake fluid. It's just dripped out. But there should. This should be sealed with rubber and it's totally disappeared. Now whether someone's used heat to do something else and burned it off, I don't know, but I mean that is gonna that's a question. And getting it out is gonna be a laugh. I was trying to push it back in, but it's not worth trying to push it back in, it's gotta come out for a new seal. Basically, just going to give the uh, block a quick dust over, um, and it's going to be held in just by the spindle as the first port of call, because that'll be the last thing if you were taking it out. I might have to take this lever off though. It does say take the lever off in the manual. Uh, so here's the swing arm spindle holding on this side I've put something that looks like a swing arm spindle on this side so there's a nice gap where the uh, the motor bush bus bosch should go and uh, would have been a good time to put on my relay rubber nipple cover but I didn't so I kind of went over the clutch cable with a bit of heat and I'm going to take it apart it's got a little split pin holding on this nut I'll give that a quick spray black and treat this with some rust treatment and uh, it should do as a clutch a clutch lever so I just noticed some uh, some damage there um, it looks like you know one of the crank case bolts has broken but I mean I'm not sure I'm not sure whether that is a crank case bolt I'll have to look at it on the diagram, but it's definitely a bit of old damage there, which is a bit annoying. It's, you know, covers, covers missing, uh, cover, cr cover bolts missing in places, but we'll have to see what happens. Okay, uh, the spindle is now uh, done up a little bit. I've got a uh, second mounting bolt in. I think there's a third one down there, which is a bit a bit difficult to get to actually. 
took the gear knob off, it's just a question of keeping it square and it drops in alright. That's a bit of a bugger. But I don't think it's the end of the world. I'm not sure. The thread seems to be on the other side of it, you see. Could probably make some sort of a shim up there. That's alright. Just added the refurbed clutch. Need a clutch cable. That's looking like uh, 1150. Need to put this back in the right place. So I'll have to do that. So my throttle cable came in there and the cable wraps round the back and you can move this by hand and follow you can move this by hand and you follow the cable round the back, put it in there and it all slips into place. So when you activate the throttle, it goes like that. Uh, it's a bit stiff because all the rest of it's all uh, bound up together. Right, uh, well, uh, the piston, the piston came, and uh, without the rings on, it really, uh, you know, fell in there, but it wasn't a wobble fit, it just fell in, and with the rings on, well, I can't actually get it to go in, uh, even though I'm trying to compress it, you know, with my fingers and stuff, and uh, I'm going to give this a quick clean with some paraffin and some scotch bright, just to, uh, it's pretty carbonised, and uh, I'm going to hopefully get that going, <laughs> get it in there, but it will fit, it is the right size. Alright, amongst other things, I'm going to chain a quick paraffin bar. Mm, now this power valve cover, look at this, yeah, M5, oh that's nice, yeah screws in quite nicely. Don't know what that is. And then this one, oh hello. It's all full of full of stuff as well, so it needs an operation. I might be able to tap it out to M6. Because you can't get these anyway. These screws aren't are no longer apart. Gasket is shot. I'm not sure you can still get that. Uh, it might not even be a gasket. It might be. Uh, oops. This gasket is shot. It might not even be a gasket. It might be some uh, plastic thing. You can still get the O-ring. And even though someone's drilled a load of holes in it, what kind of performance advantage is that going to not give you? Right, after digging out this, I don't know what it is, sort of rubber or something, we've uh, managed to uh, put the original size screw in there, so we've now got a pair of these. These, these uh, are actually unobtainable. Now hopefully we can uh, properly um, disassemble the power valve uh, using this you know and this won't break up on me because this this part's impossible to get these holes I don't know is it going to exhaust out or suck in too much as a result of having a hole in the fucking head unbelievable also look at this I mean I don't know how the hell that happened but I mean it's very close to being complete complete right off that but there is a little uh, hopefully that will be okay I mean I could w I could put some filler in there and, and smooth that down uh, but that's that's seriously bad disassembling the uh, the power valve uh, I was removing the nut and washer from the middle of the left hand valve cover and uh, as I was turning it left the valve was just rotating round with the, with the bolt here so I actually
actually uh, just shoved something up the exhaust, and uh, it did come up. It came off <coughs> quite comfortably, actually. And that's the first. Next is just to remove those uh, retaining screws and take that cap, and there should be a brass sleeve that pulls out as well. So try and find that. So it's quite a quite a torn up looking. Um, I don't know whether to describe it as a washer, but it's pretty torn up. Now there should be some brass thing that comes out, a sleeve or something. But I'm gonna have to fiddle with that. See if there is anything there. So um, a large sort of, but it could be brass, but some sort of sticky sleeve thing has come out of there, it's pretty gooey, gooey. smells pretty burned. Uh, now I should flip it over. I have to admit, I gave this a good going over with a blowtorch earlier and damped it down with oil and left it for a while. And because uh, I thought you'd have to remove it first, but now I'm trying to remove it. It's actually coming quite easy. Um, <coughs> it needs a new screw anyway, someone has put the wrong uh, wrong screw size in there. Here we, and it has a little spacer which was totally oxidised actually in this. That actually uh, caught fire quite spectacularly. It's covered in iron filings I think. So this cap is ready to come off, it is wiggling around a bit and I can see, I reckon that's a bit of damage where in, as in the past someone has tried to get this off like in quite a way. I don't really want to use a little screwdriver like that because the blade's too sharp and thin. I don't want to make these marks any worse. But well, getting this thing out was quite a job. It's quite deep and uh, it moves very slowly in this sticky tarry stuff and uh, gosh it's all over the place. Oh look there's some breakage. That's grand. Um oh dear. I was just gonna say it's sort of a bit weak. What's interesting is this this is actually on some sort of it's like a cam. It's uh, not screwed in the centre where I'd expect it to be it was there. Uh, stripping down the uh, right hand cover of the uh, Yamaha power valve system is this phosphor bronze bush inside this cover and uh, well half of it's disappeared um, now I wonder whether it was running in that condition so after putting some oil in the uh, around the piston rings piston went in the cylinder barrel quite nicely. I'm going to put the, uh, the chain is in there for a little oil bath. There's plenty of oil in there. I'm not sure we'll swirl that around every now and again. Now the question is, where it's facing the exhaust port, is it square enough to be able to be put on the conrod like that without pre-bearing the piston ring? Uh, to get it into the exact position uh, which could I mean that's why you usually put the piston on first to get it all square but even then it might not go square because the cylinder might go on a, a squiff uh, with the control panel, left hand control panel light switch in need of wiring in though so I should have mentioned the throttle tube does actually appear to be in that position Obviously, I didn't use the correct nut, but it does stick erect like that. Okay, just uh, put the uh, coil on. Seemed to be the only place it could fit, and uh, so if that works, um, and the uh, multimeter said it was in the right direction. Uh, So the piston is in the barrel and this is the left side 
Um, so if I put the uh, dudgeon pin, dudgeon pin in there, uh, and I'll go and put the small end bearing in the uh, con rod. I can thread it all up. I can leave the piston in in the barrel as long as I remember to put the base gasket on. So I've uh, installed the first gudgeon pin uh, with a Swiss Army knife uh, tire pliers actually. Uh, so talk about heavy metal. And um, it's always easier I think to do this on the bench, you know, um, because now I know that it's in right, that's in right, I'm not, you know, I've only got the one on the bike to fit, which could be, uh, now I know how they go in, I know what I'm looking for. So I, uh, I've inspected and lubricated this small end gasket, and the cage seems, you know, quite good. Everything moves nicely, but nothing is uh, stuck. Um, it's a shame, because it's only a sort of ten quid part. Uh, but we're gonna, I'm going to put it on there, I'm not going to get a new one just yet. I then need to get the base gasket out of the pack. Something I always wondered about this loom is why this pink wire has got a, a black with a white stripe shrink wrapped to it, and why this pink wire was snapped off. So, though they look different thicknesses, you know, I think these two are going to get reconnected by yours truly. And we'll see what happens. Mm, so what with the dowels and the shape? There was only one way this was ever going to go on, but I mean, it's not the most perfect fit. Look at this, there's some sort of... Some sort of resistance at the back here. Uh, that might be by design. I'm going to have to go with it. Dudgeon pin has gone through the piston almost to the other side. Didn't help with me connecting this. So just got to push it through a little bit further, fit the dodging pin, and we'll seed it down, removing this bit of rag. Right, now I've got some new nuts on order here. Um, and one of them is supposed to have a clutch cable that you can't, a clutch cable holder that you can't get anymore. I just found a couple of nuts, I've got one the other side, so I might just be able to hold this down with a couple of nuts, spin it over uh, for a spark test later. So obviously I'm not planning on running it with only two bolts holding the cylinder barrel on, but uh, I should be able to gently turn it. It sounds alright, I think I'm going to get some oil lubrication down there, a bit more of it, but it should be, if I get it enough to flick it over for a spark test, be interesting. Okay, just a temporary wired up CDI, uh, and it seems dead, but then on closer inspection it would seem dead, because this wire's not even connected, it seems to have come straight off somehow, and that's, it might just be a bit tricky to reconnect that. Still, we will give it a shot and have a look how bad it is. So having a look behind the magneto cover, well, this is a bit flipping on the wobble, isn't it? Joined up these wires and uh, still dead. So I'm going to have to uh, do a diagnostic. So I'm going to uh, quickly show the uh, Status test. This is the uh, red, with the, the white with the red stripe, and the white with the blue stripe. Showing that figure down there, three, three, three ohms. Uh, now the next one, slightly more tricky because they're uh, pin connectors. Well, here we are with the contacts on. That's the figure two, three, four ohms, and that's for the. Uh, green with a white 
stripe and a red black with a red stripe. Now the thing is, whilst those are good, there's no discernible voltage. So I still think that the stator has got a, a problem. By putting a nut, a bolt in each of those two holes on the thing, and then putting a bracing it with this piece of wood, I can actually uh, mine it out cause not to damage the radiator. If I can get to that nut with the socket here and undo it, it's a two-man job. flywheel puller which works on the same as the, uh, the DT50. Ooh. Of course this is a left hand thread so in order to put it in we have to pretend we're undoing it. I think it's a very fine thread so obviously I don't want to cross thread it. So having a look inside, there's not a lot to see. This says, uh, I think 3BM, I think it looks like the original stator. I do know that screw there is, uh, is stripped, the head of it. The other one comes out quite easily. One or two of the heads on the uh, coils are also stripped. Spray a load of WD-40 in there. You know, the resistances are good. There might just be a wire come off in there, so... <coughs> need to investigate the back of it. Okay, using the impact driver and a wooden mallet, use this old bit of inner tube to put over the damaged screw head and the correct screw driver. And, uh... Like, um, yeah, that's now, you can get that out by the finger. So that's longer than I thought, actually. I thought it was only a couple of, a couple of mil long, but there it is. With a damaged head, I thought it was only about that long. Did well to get that out, actually. And, uh, woo! Right, so here are the two screws that um, hold on the stator plate. This is the back of the stator plate. It's now just held on by the uh, reverse switch light, which is probably seized on. It's just a little P1 by the looks of things. Uh, I haven't got a PH1 screwdriver, so I'm going to have to uh, just hunt about for one. Come on, well, this is the final video on the stator. Uh, I isolated this live, well it is a live wire, there's no two ways about it. It goes, it takes AC voltage to the headlights for example, to power the headlights. I mean, so anyway, so if we uh, attach a probe to it from the multimeter, we've got another probe on the earth, right, it's got a definite short circuit, and um, I'm going to get a new stator. I mean, what else can I do? It looks, it's... If I want to take these things apart and rewind them, it's a serious soldering iron job. I mean, what the hell is this stuff? How do you melt that? I don't even want to go there. Do you know what I mean? Let's just get one that's working.